Okay, this tutorial is about presets. Now, if you have a professional lighting console, a lot of times what you'll find out is if you have a light with more than one attribute, such as an LED PAR, it probably has a minimum of um, red, green, blue, and then a dimmer channel, so a minimum of four channels. And then some of them have more channels than that too. They would have um, channels that allow it to strobe and maybe some colors that they can bring up. But uh, with a professional lighting console, what you'll find out is that it will automatically assign <clears throat> those attributes so that you can pick them out very, very quickly and program quickly. So rather than having to go through each light or even as a group and program, it makes it a lot quicker. And that's what we're looking at when we're ever programming is just to make things easier to select and then tweak as we go on. So uh, just giving you an example, I've kind of created my own presets here in QLC Plus. And what you're looking at is the virtual console page. So let's go back. Um, general setup here, I have uh, eight LED PAR lamps, RGB plus a dimmer channel on them, and then two moving lights. I'm going to do a separate video about the moving lights and presets for them because the presets and the moving lights are very, very helpful to help you get things done quickly. So anyway, let's take a look at what we did programming-wise. I'm going to go to the functions. And you'll see that I did my PAR colors, PAR aqua, and all the different colors. Now you're going to notice in these colors here, if I took a look at all channels, I'm only dealing with the red, green, blue channels. I'm not doing any intensity. So these settings here are just for color. And then I did a separate setting for intensity. And if you look at the intensity, that's all I'm dealing with is intensity here. So I've separated it out into two preset qualities, the color and then the intensity. Now, normally you'd have to go in and do both here and then save your scene in that. But by doing it this way and then putting them in the virtual console, so here I can quickly select color, and down here I can quickly select intensity. And then what I've done is put in sliders and knobs that can override what these settings are. And if you want to take a look at my video about sliders, and it actually applies to knobs too, You'll see how I got this specially set up this way and, and how the override works. But I'll just do a demonstration. So now once we're up and running, and I'll be in run mode, and I want to program the PARs quickly, I can say, okay, I want uh, blue PARs. I want the intensity to be at 50%. Boom. I mean, it's that quickly. Then I can just go up here and then say, save scene, blue PARs, something like that. And I'm just going to say dump all channels. We'll, we'll do that. And say OK. And it just saved that way, blue pars. Now, where I can go in and edit is I can do separate intensities here. Or let's say that I have my blue pars up at 30%. And then I just want my pars 1 and 2 to be brighter. Now I can go down here and override, and you'll see these coming up. So these sliders down here are set, they're level sliders. And again, watch my uh, tutorial on sliders and how to make them. Notice that once I move these, these turn red, which means these are overriding this function of 30% that's up here. If I click here, we will go back to the 30% setting. So I'll watch that again. So I move these up, I've increased these to a higher percentage, so they're brighter and these in the back are dimmer. And again, I can click here. Also, what I've done with all the PARs, in case you can make this kind of complicated, I moved a bunch of them and changed this around. So very specific as far as intensities go. And now I want to reset everything back to normal before I, I go out of run mode. I've set these up so that if I just hit Z on my computer keyboard, it just knocks them out. Okay, But again, I can set things very carefully here to any specific intensities that I would like. Now, I don't have separate colors here because doing the colors would involve me having sliders for every single uh, par that's up there, which you could do, but then this little work area here would become awfully complex and awfully crowded. So I decided to keep it down here. Now, I can adjust colors, however. So if I'm in blue and I said, well, you know what, I'd like to change this slightly. I'm going to add in a little bit of red. And notice the same thing now that this turns 
red indicating that I am overriding the settings for this blue up here. I've overridden that and that's why this one turns red. So I can kind of almost get like a purplish shade up there on the stage. And again, this comes in very handy because you can use this while you're working live on the stage and see how things are actually working. Then once I get everything set the way that I want it to be set, I go ahead and I just save it as a scene. Then I can go back and I can put that in my cue list. Same thing here, I can either click on it individually or I just use the X button to drop this out. It'll go back to the blue color that I originally set. Use my Z, reset this, take this out and just click this to get rid of that and the blue to take that. So now I'm just back to zero. So just a quick way to set up a scene and then save it. Now, once I have scenes up and running, and I'm going to go to my scenes, my cues pages here. Let me bring up scene 1A and you're going to see the movers come in here also. All right. But I have my pars up here and running and I decide, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my cues and that kind of thing and it's like, well, I, I need to adjust this. The pars are not dark enough. They need to be darker. I can hop back to my pars page and it's showing me intensity here and I can change that intensity going higher. Now, notice it will not go lower than the intensity set. But once I reach a higher value, it will go above that. Why is that? Because remember, intensity is an HTP uh, property. Highest takes precedence. So right now, if this is receiving a signal to be at this, it won't change it going down. It's telling it it's at 40, it's at 50%. And if I try to drop it down, it's saying, well, no, this is the higher value that I'm currently from the cues back here from Q scene 1A. It's broad, it's sending a DMX value of 50%. So when I try to go below that 50%, it won't do anything about it. But if I go above that 50%, it will brighten them up. So, okay, so what if you do want to go lower? Where that's where you can grab these individual sliders and move these down. Now, a little trick here. These won't take a hold until you actually move them. So again, you move them. And here's maybe a trick. I could put these all up at 100%. Then use my master slider here to bring these down to a certain value. So if you're wanting like, oh, I got to go through each individual one and set them to like a percentage, there's a little trick. That's why I included this master slider in here that I could drop these way down. But again, that's dropping them all down for that scene 1A. So I put this back. If I hit Z again, I'm going to go back to Q values where it's, it's putting them all back at Q value. And again, if you want to change this now, you know, and I could do something like, let's say, I don't need these front two, this, those, uh, those pars there on. Those front two pars, excuse me, I didn't want to do that with the back par there. And maybe uh, these two pars here in the back, I don't I just need them over in this center part of the stage. Then what you would go in and do is save this as scene maybe 1A.2 and then go back and in, include, that, include that in your cue list later. You could improve it. So I would just go in and say, okay, Save this as scene 1B, let's say, and then say OK. So now it's saved. So now when I'm all done, I'll hit Z to get out of here, click that, um, get rid of the blue here. And that's actually becoming from my cues. So I have to go over here and shut down my cues, say off. They all disappear. Now, and if I go out of run mode and I go back over here to my functions, I'll see that I have a scene 1B. So now I could go into my queue list, my main queues, say add scene 1B in there, bring that in, then just move scene 1B up there, and then just get rid of scene 1A just like that. So that's a way that you can use this to go ahead then and edit things. But I think it's just quicker doing it this way using the virtual console. Now, take a look at my uh, next video because this is even more helpful when you're doing this with moving lights.